morning has broken my windows are open hello everybody it's been a while since i've done a day in the life welcome back if you are returning and if you are new here hey there i'm shayla an earthy mountain mama and a happy homemaker wife with a homeschool family of eight i share two to four videos here a month with all things home from wholesome scratch cooking homemaking homeschooling and homesteading i'm slightly hippie but i'm a christian and I often share a short, sweet devotional in my videos with hopes of being a light in this dark world. I'm no spring chicken, like so many similar YouTubers, but I do have 30 years experience in the art of frugal homemaking, a master's degree in herbology, and 39 years experience in the homeschool and homestead world since my husband and I are second generation homeschool and homesteaders. In 2022, after over 20 years of dreaming, we finally acquired our dream mountain homestead. Our home is a fixer upper and still under construction, but would love to have you come along and join us here. So hit that sub button if you'd like to see more videos like this. So I lean on you when I'm I went to take a shower this morning and there's a science experiment in my bathtub. Yardstick ball in order. Never did much to set me free. I got a new cannon. Mm -hmm. I met a wild. Once everybody has had a little bit of time to wake up, it's time to start chores. We like to start chores by about seven o'clock. We just had another big snowfall. The weather has been crazy lately. One day it will be all sunny and beautiful like this. And then the next day we have more snow. Each time we get a snowfall though, it doesn't take very long for it to melt. Usually just a day or two at most, maybe five. Our oldest son's job is the chickens. We're helping him build his first little entrepreneurship business. He would like to take his first year out of high school learning farming and learning some business skills with farming. By the way, for those of you that like following our homesteading journey, at the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing what we have been doing for our chickens lately as far as feed in order to try to save some money. And I'll be sharing an alternative to what we normally do with our meat birds. It's cold outside, but back inside the house, we have some new little starts here that are all warm and cozy. I decided to start my own marigolds this year. In addition to the peppers, for the first time ever last year, I successfully started our own pepper plants. I decided to try our own tomato plants as well, and I've got some San Marzano's going. This will save us around $300 in starts. One of the older kids got some eggs going. Some of the kids like peanut butter toast and some like eggs. I just watched a little video on how eggs are one of the most perfect brain foods and nourishing foods for the body. So I've been encouraging the kids to eat at least one or two eggs every morning. Personally, I find the mental work of uh, teaching can leave me utterly exhausted if I'm not careful. Once I heard that three hours of mental work is equivalent to a full day of labor and I believe it. So let's talk about self-care for a second. Something I've learned is that self-care and nutrition is critical though. Eating just two eggs in the morning and taking my supplements makes all of the difference in the world. I was asked recently what I take. So a lot of the supplements I take are specific to the autoimmune disease I have, but others are specific to women going through perimenopause. I focus very heavily on digestive and gut support as well as liver support. Here I'm drinking a liver support tea with some ginger and lemon mixed in. In addition to that though, I take B-complex, hair, skin, and nail 
Nail Supplements, Folate D3. My doctor has me on 5,000 I use minimum. The selenium is for my thyroid. Again, that's something my doctor has me on. And then calcium and magnesium. Here are a couple more I feel a lot better when I take. It's enzymes and more liver support. This time of year, a lot of moms start struggling with burnout. For just a second, I wanna share one of the ways that is super simple and pleasant that I have found to help with burnout. Taking care of a family can be exhausting at times. Personally, I put in an average of 13 to 17 hour days. When I kind of start running out of steam, feeling burnout, one of the ways that I found to recover is sitting down with a cup of tea during the kids' quiet time or reading hour and doing some devotions and watching some of my favorite YouTuber mamas. Nothing motivates me faster than seeing fellow homeschool or homemaking mamas taking care of their families. Watching other mamas take care of their families helps recharge my batteries. It helps me to realize how blessed that I am to lead the life that I do, even though it's a lot of work. I've had a little bit of trouble though finding channels that are truly authentic and relatable, but I found one recently. Tabitha over at This Mama's House has a channel that has quickly made it to my top favorites. I have found This Mama's House to be so refreshing and relaxing and recharging. Tabitha's a bigger family mama like myself and she too is a homeschool mama with a little farm. I especially love that Tabitha sprinkles in bits of faith into her videos. Yesterday I was watching one of her videos and she pointed out that the Proverbs 31 woman had made servants and that comparatively today we have things like washing machines and uh, vacuums. <laughs> I love Tabitha's authentic honesty and her love for God and her family. Family. Today we are collaborating, so when you're done watching this video here, please go check out her channel. I will link to it in the description box below. If you love my channel, I'm confident you will love Tabitha's as well. When you're in the season of raising little children and it becomes difficult to get devotions in every single morning, it helps to have scriptures posted throughout the house. It helps a lot to have systems and routines in a way that it's kind of automated for the kids. These are all of the activities. They're little reminders for the day. There's chores and just reminders in here. Things like get dressed, take your vitamins <laughs> on certain days. Some of my kids need to be reminded of um, take a bath or a shower, please. <laughs> for school, they have checklists. These checklists help them to be independent. They can come and look and see what they're supposed to be doing for the day themselves. So this whole sheet is for one child and today we're on Thursday, so they're just working across. This day is a lighter day because we do a unit study together and it takes up about two to three hours and covers a whole bunch of subjects. I still have to do a lot of checking in and supervising. And of course the little ones still need lots of help, but by mapping things out this way, the kids are able to do what they can without me and they never have to wait on me if I'm helping somebody else. I always sit down on the first Sunday of the month and I map all of this out for all of the kids. In the spring, when we're finishing up our homeschool year, I start working on the plans for the upcoming homeschool year. This year, I have my own planner that I'm really excited about that I'll be using to map out the upcoming homeschool year. In addition to that though, it also helps to have a good home management system in place. We like having certain days of the week for certain activities. I found the simplest way to keep track of the systems is to have checklists in binders like this. Alright everybody, I need opinions. What do you guys want for dinner? We have an enchilada, chicken enchilada casserole still, taco meat, Leftover, do we want a taco casserole? I don't think we have enough taco shells. Taco casserole, or should I just make chili with all of it? Make chili with the taco meat. Make chili with the taco meat? Okay. Since we have a bigger family, there are two tasks that are just simply never caught up on and never done. And if they are, they're usually only done for like five minutes. One is laundry, the other one is dishes. <laughs> my oldest children do their own laundry and each has an assigned day of the week. A couple of my boys were just kind of letting the laundry collect in the laundry room and it got so crammed we couldn't walk in there anymore. So I said, <laughs> before school starts, we better get this put away. <laughs> This is one of those little things we like to get to before it's time to start school at eight o'clock. We like to start between eight and 8.30 so that we can be done by a certain time. My younger kids love being outdoors and they know that the sooner that they get their school done in the afternoon, the sooner they can get outside. So it's a great incentive for them to get their schoolwork started and finished. Years ago, I learned that something or someone will always rear its head 
to thwart a homeschool day if you're not really firm and if you let it. Today I had a perfect example of that, so I wanted to share what just happened. I was getting ready to start lessons with the kids and I went to check my messages because my husband always texts me a sweet message at the beginning of the day and it's kind of how I know he made it to work safe and uh, he always tells me I love you have a good day something like that you know so we always text back and forth for a second in the morning this morning I when I went to check the text from him I noticed I had a missed call normally I turn my ringer off on a homeschool day so that's why I didn't get the missed call. Well, this was an important call. It's a call I've been waiting back for for quite some time from our farm feed store about some chickens that we needed to order. So I needed to, or I, we need to order a few more laying hens and I wanted a specific kind. So for about a week, I've been waiting for a call back from them so they could tell me how much they were so I could tell them how many I wanted to order. And I noticed that they tried to call this morning. So. I had enough time before lessons start because some of the kids were finishing up other things and so I had time. So I called them back thinking it was going to be a very brief ordeal. And it was, but they called to tell me that my Buff Orpingtons have arrived and they were holding them in the back for me. I was like, did I order them? I don't, I, I, did, I did not order them. I'm, I'm almost positive. I wanted a price before I ordered so I could know how many to order. I, I remember saying I would like around five, but maybe more. Anyways, they're telling me they can only hold them for today. Well, I'm not going to town today. And if I do go, it's going to completely disrupt my whole homeschool day. Also, I'm going to town tomorrow. We live way out <laughs> far away from town. We don't have new vehicles that we're making payments on. We have old ones that we can pay off. That's how we've always done it. So our vehicle is a 12 miles to the gallon is bad. And I didn't want to waste money going in today and then having to go in tomorrow because I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow that I really cannot miss. So I had to decide, what am I gonna do? Now, I know that a lot of people would say, go get the chicks and just count it as part of the homeschool day. Um, there's, you know, that is a that is an idea and, and it is an option that there are times that I have done things like that. But the thing is, is that if, if you have a child in the third grade and they finish the third grade and they don't need to do it again because they did well, you don't have them repeat the third grade. We've already had a lot of chicken lessons we don't necessarily need another one today. I mean, yeah, we could do a science life cycles thing, but we've already done that and we don't need to do it again today. So I told them just put the chicks out. If they're still there tomorrow, I'll get them tomorrow, but I can't make it today. The Proverbs 31 woman looks well to the ways of her household and I had to quickly overview what is best for my household at this time. I'm already hatching some chicks, so if I don't go get these chicks, it's not gonna be the end of the world. There will be some tomorrow and I know that there is another farm store in town that I could also go to that will probably have chicks as well. Yes, I do specifically want the Buff Orpingtons, but I said I'll just have to take my chances because I know that the things that we're going to do today are important and I do not want to miss a day of homeschool today with all the lessons that we have assigned today. She says, that's fine. We'll be getting another order in next month and then again in April. Perfect. When is that going to be? She says, tells me the dates and I said, perfect. I go and I write those dates down on one of the dates. I'm already actually taking all the kids into town for a dental appointment. So it worked out. But my point is that in homeschooling, as a homeschool mom, there's always going to be something to pop up and thwart your homeschool day if you let it. And before you know it, you could end up losing a lot of time out of the homeschool year and regret that later. So some of my rules for myself on a homeschool day is we get started by a certain time. If we don't get done by a certain time, we look at ways to fit it in after like homework. But I find that sticking to a structure, sticking to the routine, as best as possible is really the only way to get the job done, especially when you have a lot of children that you're homeschooling to, because there's gonna be lots of little things that pop up along the way just within the home and the children themselves. And if you let outside things thwart your homeschool day, you will not get nearly as far at the end of the homeschool year as you wish you had. Now there have been people along the way who 
did not like this. Some people who would persistently try to call throughout the school hours of the day, even though I had told them I am only taking, I can only take calls between these hours. When we lived in town, it was really hard because sometimes people would just drop in unannounced during the homeschool day. And you know, you just, you gotta be really firm. If you're homeschooling your kids, you don't have forever to get it done. If you take time off to chat with somebody on the phone or a visit with little children, if you're like in the middle of a lesson and it gets interrupted with something like that, it's almost impossible to get them back and get them back on track. And another thing I've noticed is if you don't start by a certain time, the kids' brains just kind of, I don't know, they don't do as well. It's a good idea to start fairly early in the morning. I found the closer to noon that you get, the more difficult it is for the kids to get their work done. This is especially true of math and language arts. I find that for punctuation, grammar, math, all of those things, you can get them done in a very short amount of time if you tackle them first thing in the morning. But wait till after lunch or close to lunch. It's gonna take a lot longer. There will be more frustration. So those are definitely things you wanna tackle and get out of the way first thing in the morning if you can. This is also why you don't see me do a whole lot of homeschool day in the lives because they're hard to do and film. That's how it is for me anyways. That's why I don't do a whole lot of them because by the end of the day of doing them, I am utterly exhausted. <laughs> Even with really good systems and routines in place, it is not like it's perfect. And I really do not want to give you the illusion that it is. Right now I'm in a season of life where no matter how hard I try, <laughs> I can not stay on top of messes. I can get the house cleaned up. We together can get it cleaned up and we can do this about once a day, but about five minutes later, it's like everything explodes. This is partly because we do have a larger family, but it's also because so many little areas of our home are still under construction and rooms are constantly being rearranged while we work on other rooms. I also still don't have a lot of shelving in place because the, all of the closets still need to be made. So the hardest thing for me is to overlook all of that and actually sit down even though the place isn't perfectly tidy. But if I wasn't able to overlook those things, we just wouldn't get any school done. So we try to focus on the tables and the sofas because that's where the school is done. <laughs> and of course, we try to keep the kitchen and bathrooms in good shape. But this is what my home looks like right now and so often since, you know, it's under construction. So it's a challenge, but I feel that the important thing is realizing that the house will get done eventually, but the kids are growing every day and I only have so much time to teach them. My two high schoolers don't need a lot of my help. In fact, it's not pictured here, but quite a few of their programs are actually online. I chose online for them this year because I simply just did not have time to do all of the grading needed for their transcripts. And for all of the kids from third grade up, I have an online math program that actually comes with tutors as needed. I've done a complete review of that math program. I will leave that in the description below. With so many children to teach, I found that this was a game changer and helped me so much to make sure things didn't fall through the cracks that were important to me. In case you're wondering what you're looking at, these are positive mindset posters I learned in therapy and Bible verses that I have all over the office for myself and my kids. He's doing a science experiment over here. He's got water some kind of waterproof toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> We have a little rule in our house. When one of the kids is doing a science experiment, they make an announcement so that the other kids have an opportunity to come and watch it if they would like. It is shocking how much the younger kids learn just by being in a home with older kids who are learning, the younger kids get such a jump start. So you would think it gets harder homeschooling a large family, but actually it gets easier because when the younger ones are constantly learning from osmosis and just from being in the same room and overhearing, it gets easier as time goes on. 
I will say though, um, just it for the sake of honesty, I am getting ready to wrap up my oldest son's transcript because he's graduating this spring. So uh, I'm working on that and mm, that's not easy. <laughs> The transcript part is hard. High schoolers can be hard. I've hired out a lot of the work and I've gotten some tutoring because a lot of the high school stuff I just simply didn't have time for since I am homeschooling young ones. So that part is hard. Oh, it is 10 o'clock. So I'm snacking. You said you weren't that hungry. No, I said I was. You said you weren't that hungry at breakfast. And besides, you're going to snack at 10 o'clock. So now he's got a little experiment that he wants to do after watching his brothers. So we're gonna go do that real quick. It's time to switch out more laundry. And it's snack time. Tacos are not a snack, sweetheart. They're a meal. We're gonna eat lunch in a little bit. For a snack, you can have some carrots, you can have some apples, you can have a cheese stick. Those are snacks. What are the cheese sticks? They're in the refrigerator where they go. I really hope you guys don't judge me for my kids attire. I do not stylize my children for my videos. <laughs> I do my best not to let my job with my YouTube channel and my work here interrupt their lives. And unless we're going to church, my children dress themselves. And also I've got two children in particular that like to wear their shirts inside out and oftentimes backwards. And if you tell them their shirts inside out are backwards, they'll say, I know. time it's okay first is the tip they're giving us a tip it's as in it apostrophe s yes. see here okay so first we have an independent clause do you remember what around here we love flash cards i love flash cards of all kinds and i feel like they work very well for us the kids learn so much from flash cards i really think all kids do but something that i've always felt was missing with language arts curriculums is flash cards so I love the good and the beautiful because they come with these flash cards. You can order these flash cards. And this has really taken my kids' retention when it comes to grammar, punctuation, language arts, to the next level. They're doing so much better than they've ever done before. And it is largely due to these flash cards. One concern that I see a lot of homeschool moms worry about, especially at large family homeschool moms, is how to spend quality time with each one of their children. I used to worry about this too until one day I realized homeschooling actually provides within itself the most perfect opportunity to spend quality time with your children. I wanna talk about mom guilt for a minute. Years ago, I was feeling like I wasn't spending enough quality time with each one of my children. And it was just burdening me so badly. And then one day I was talking to a mom who sent her kids to public school, and she was also feeling the same thing. And I realized it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how far you go as a mother. The devil is always gonna look for a way to make you feel guilty over something. You could be the best mother. You could be homeschooling your kids, going through all of the extra effort and time and, and the sacrifice that it is to homeschool your kids. You could be making them home cook meals. You could be, you know, reminding your children every day you love them. You could be providing for them clothing, buying them toys at times when they want it, doing all of these things. You could be doing all of the things. And at the end of the day, you're going to still feel guilty. Once I realized that guilt was a ploy of the devil to disarm me and all mothers, I started learning how to look at all that I was doing instead of what I wasn't doing. And once that stress was released and I was able to let go of just a little bit of that guilt, suddenly I was able to see things more clearly and problem solve a lot more clearly. And I came up with a solution to this problem that I was deliberating. How do you spend quality time 
with your children when you're homeschooling and you have a big family. And it's it's truly, it, it, it is a, you know, it's a dilemma. It's like, how, how do you do that? I, I want to share the best way that I have found to do that. The best way that I have found to do that is to use the school time as a bonus quality time. So when I'm homeschooling my children, as I sit down with each one of them, I tell them, well, I'm excited to spend this time with you today. I really enjoy getting to spend this time with you. You'll notice a lot of times as you do that, maybe not every time, but you'll notice a lot of times when you do that for a child, all of a sudden they perk up. They're ready to try a little harder in their school, maybe argue a little less. And if you give them a pat on the back and tell them, you're doing great today, you'll see tomorrow they're gonna try even harder most of the time. Maybe not every time again, but they do. They will try harder next time most likely. If you tell them, you know, I'm really enjoying just watching the way you write, look for moments. That's the point. Look for moments when you're sitting there with your child and helping them to show them you appreciate them, you appreciate the efforts they're making, you appreciate just them being them and spending the time with them. And you know, when they're really little, it's it's a lot of fun because I, it could just be me, but I think little chubby um, hands writing are just, are just the cutest thing. And their little eyelashes and you notice their little chubby cheeks and their intent look on their faces, they're writing, I just, You can slow down enough, long enough, to notice them and really notice them. You'll find so many little things to appreciate about them and the stage of life that you're in. And you're gonna have distractions from other kids. You're gonna have distractions all around all the time. So, you know, it takes a discipline to learn to just really focus on them and appreciate that quality time and make it quality time. But two things will happen. You will be getting the quality time with them, but you're also going to be enriching the school time because they learn so much more and so much better. And that is probably my favorite thing about homeschooling. It gives a mother or a father the ability to parent and minister to the whole child, mind, body, and spirit. This is my eighth grader. He is getting a head start on high school. He finished some of his curriculum early this year. So we decided, hey, let's get a jump. High school's hard, there's a lot of work. So we're getting a head start. Oh yeah, thirsty. Okay, so did we, did we change all of this out for your new high school? No? Okay, we need to, could you erase what I had there before, and let's just write your high school book in, please. A paragraph should have three to ten sentences. Three is the minimum. Three is the minimum, four that's right. Here. This is exciting. I'm printing up certificates of completion as some of the kids get close to finishing up their math levels. My daughter just came up to me and she told me, hey, can I tell you something? And I said, what? And she goes, Thank you for buying me this book. I love this book. <laughs> I said, I knew she would. She's, mm, you're halfway through it today? Cool. Uh, does it look like I'm halfway through it? Yeah, I looks like, it. yeah. And when you get it all done, you get to pick a reward, a payday or a Snickers. Snickers I already picked. Yeah. In this scene, we had a little bit of an impromptu science mystery. My eighth grader saw the reflection, the heat radiating off the stove and reflecting onto this glass and couldn't figure out what was going on. So he called me in. He was kind of alarmed. So we had a little bit of a mystery to solve. You can't see the heat rising from the stove, but it is rising. And somewhere there is light shining through. I don't know where the light is shining through. So we got to look around the room. Let's look around the room and find out where the light's reflecting onto that cup. The light is reflecting off the car outside and it's bouncing in from the side over here and it's hitting the cup. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a reflection of the heat from the stove over here. So what is happening is the light's reflecting out that window right there and it's hitting the cup behind it. We've made it halfway through the day. We've made it through the really hard subjects now. We have history. Um, kids even got science done today, which they don't normally get done until after lunch. So yeah, we're doing really good today. It's been a good day. Because the sunshine, sunshine outside. It's giving us extra energy. It's time to start lunch now. Okay, so this is number six. Now as you're writing them, you must say it. 
when when you say it and you hear the words come out of your mouth, they'll go in your ears and into your brain better. Okay, so say it out loud as you write it, okay? Well, I don't know what you mean. Lunchtime. Over our lunch break, we like to listen to our history readings. We've been using My Father's World, but yet this year I decided to enrich school with more audio books, one of them being Story of the World, which I highly recommend. I saw the flashes in the dark okay. Colors on the wall Bright against the monochrome Where I felt so small I drew the curtains up Pulled away the blinds Heard a rushing wind Through the window of waiting, my eyes I'm waiting, I'm waiting I began to glow with the love and delight. Shine, shine. After lunch, everybody is supposed to wash their own plate and cup and silverware and put it in the dishwasher. If everybody works together to help clean up the kitchen, it only takes about 10 minutes. Usually about this time too, we like to run around and do a quick reset. Everybody runs around and picks up the books that they're finished with and we put them away. We also take a minute to pick up any belongings that are left out that need to be returned to their places. And after that, everybody is kind of dying digesting and I find it's the perfect time for everybody to sit back and relax and have their reading hour. When I was a boy if you ever doubt your ability to teach your child, I want you to do something. There's a website that I'm gonna to link to in the description box below. Go to that website, you can type in your state or click on your state, and you can look at your district and your state's report cards. So many times we think that our child is not getting XYZ, whatever it is. And we think, oh, if they were going to a public school, they would. So sometimes we'll go and we'll like jump up curriculum, you know, and change up curriculums, thinking, oh, it's the curriculum, you know, it's just not connected with my kid when it's actually just the concept and so sometimes us homeschool moms will scrap a curriculum thinking if I get a new one my child won't struggle with this concept anymore or with this subject anymore so we get the new curriculum we start over from scratch with it which is it takes time you know it takes time to get used to a new curriculum and we get started and we find oh well they don't like this curriculum either when a lot of times it's not the curriculum it's just that our kid is struggling with a particular subject or concept and a lot of times we don't realize that sometimes the kid just needs a little bit of time before they're gonna get it sometimes they do need it explained a different way, but a lot of times we think, oh, well, if we put them in public school, they wouldn't be struggling with this, when that's not true. I ha Actually, a teacher is uh, the one that told me that. She said, Shayla, if you were to put your child in public school, he would probably still be struggling with this concept. It's just that he's struggling with this concept, and that's all there is to it. And she said, there are so many kids I have to pass on that are struggling with concepts that they're just not gonna get it. It's just not time for them to get it, okay? So a teacher. Told me this to encourage me through the years i have sought out professional teachers to consult with and for advice many times over because i have some neurodivergent children many times i've lacked confidence and wondered if i was doing things right or enough i think i've had close to a dozen teacher friends over the years and i can tell you some of the biggest supporters that I've ever had in my homeschool journey and some of the biggest proponents for homeschooling that I've met are teachers that have been teaching for extended periods of time. Something else I want to add is that people that are unfamiliar with homeschooling don't know this, and we as homeschool moms can often forget this, but oftentimes we can trust our curriculum a lot more than we think we can. Most curriculums are designed by certified professional teachers, and if you continue to push through and trust the process, a lot of times it usually all comes together in the end. Uh, I think it's at that same website. If not, I will link to where it is in the description box below, but there's another place you can go to see exactly how much money your state is spending per child. So you can see exactly how much money you're saving your state by homeschooling your child. 
about, I don't know, three weeks ago, I got sick. It's February 23rd, I remember now. So I guess, yeah, it's been about three weeks ago. I got really sick. And of all the times to stop taking my vitamins, I just stopped taking my vitamins after it. I just haven't been able to like get back on the same routine I was on before. Now I know how much those vitamins were helping me. Usually the winter is the hardest time, like zero energy exhaustion. For two months I was doing excellent. There's a little bowl under here with plastic wrap on it. I'm thinking it's another science experiment and I have no idea who's doing what here. Well, I guess that's what you get for making independent learners. <laughs> it's now about 2.30 and formal lessons are all wrapped up for the day. So we are moving on to activities and this little guy wants to make some Buckeye balls. They're kind of like a Reese's only you make them in the form of a Buckeye. But recently we figured out we can make these on a cookie sheet as well. And it goes a lot faster than making the individual little Buckeyes. <laughs> <laughs> We're both laughing at ourselves because we keep losing count on the cups of powdered sugar here. <laughs> By the way, spending time cooking with your kids is a great way to not only teach them mathematics, but a wonderful opportunity to have more quality time with them that is truly enriching. Nice, you should cut it before it chills or it will be too hard to cut though. It's the end of the day and it's it's so loud inside. They're all getting so giddy that I don't think you'd be able to hear me if I was filming inside. The older boys are um, just bantering back and forth. One of them is practicing chess moves. The girls are getting ready to go on a little walk outside. And let's see, um, the youngest is gonna go on a walk too. It's a really beautiful day, a little chilly, but they've got good coats, so yeah. This is the end of the day, it's about four o'clock. It is now that time of the day when I really need an energy boost, especially when I'm not taking my vitamins. This stuff, it's called Zip Fizz. I get it from Costco. I don't need it if I'm taking my vitamins usually, but if I forget, I find my energy levels plummet and this stuff really helps to pick them back up. The two oldest boys are down at the chicken coop getting one of the spare chicken coops ready for our little baby chicks since they're not staying inside of their little box anymore. My husband is home a little bit early from work and he is working on the house and finishing up this room. I am crazy about the color we chose for it. My daughter and I really wanted a dark academia look for this room. I'll have a reveal at the end of this video for you. With the exception of the clothes dryer, the house is pretty quiet right now, so that's nice. The kids left a, quite a few books around the place, but it'll probably only take five minutes to run around and pick up after ourselves. We usually have a 15 minute tidy up time after school every day. Sometimes it takes 20 minutes, but usually about 15, and then the kids get a reward. So today they kind of got their rewards and their free time before picking up. They did pick up, but they probably only picked up for maybe, I don't know, five minutes. So there's still some things left out, but we'll get to it in a little bit. Oh, they studied hard today. So that's, that's good. They did a good job in school. I found these binders from a little family operated business on Amazon. They're really pretty, you guys. I got two of the larger ones that I showed you in one of my last videos. So what I'm doing with these, is I am designing my own routines and systems in Canva. So I have an upstairs cleaning system and a downstairs cleaning system. And I'm gonna have the cleaning systems, print them off and put them in here. If you have little children, then you probably know that managing their clothing can be a challenge, especially when they get into their clothing all of the time and ahem, rearrange. <laughs> I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that I'm probably not the only parent out there that has been late to a function be because of not being able to find a child's small clothing, despite the fact that I regularly try to stay on top of keeping their clothing organized. I am sure not everybody has this problem, but for those that do, I'm going to share how I handle it. All of my children go through a stage when they're little where they go to get dressed, they go to get their clothes out, and they drag out practically everything looking for one specific thing and make a huge mess that takes hours to sort through and put back. So I've got my youngest and he's going through this. He's my last one. So what I did is I just brought all of his bins into my room and they fit underneath my bed. 
bed. So since they're in my room, I will see if he does that and I will be able to more easily and more consistently teach him how to put things back when he's done. Each one of his little bins here are labeled with a picture so he can see easily what is supposed to be in each one. We don't fold clothes yet because it would be a waste of time because he would come in and he would just shuffle through all of this and all of the clothes would be unfolded within less than probably 30 seconds. So before with his clothes, he will go down and change multiple times a day and I don't know that he's even doing it. This way, I'll know. What is it? Gotta be very gentle. Need you, baby. Gentle. No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's wait. Time for a little homestead tour, and I'm gonna talk about what we're learning about chicken feed. As mentioned in the intro, my husband and I were raised with a lot of homesteading practices, and we have always done what we can for the most part. But this is the first time in our journey that we have actually ever had the space and the resources to really do all that we have aspired to. We've been slowly building up and adding to as we can afford to, but I've also had a bit of restudying and brushing up to do. I am very excited. We've been waiting almost two years. We're finally gonna get our goats. This is gonna be the goat hut in there. Fencing is going to be out back, or the little pasture is going to be out back over here. When we lived in the Midwest, I had Oberhosleys, so I'm really excited to have them again. One of my husband's jobs in the Midwest was as a farmhand, and so he's been around cattle and cows his whole life, and he would like to get some cattle at some point, but that's going to be down the road. At this stage, our biggest farming ventures have been gardening, food preservation, and chickens. Lots and lots of chickens. So are we rotating the chicken saddles? Because I don't no. think some of these chickens need the saddles anymore and it looks like there's a couple that we need to switch it out on. Currently we have close to 40 laying hens and every year about this time we order over a hundred meat birds. I've been keeping some records over the last couple of years and this year we decided to figure out a way to get the cost down. So we're doing a little bit of experimentation. I learned that there's a couple ways you can try to potentially stretch feed. One of them is by soaking feed for a few hours and another one is to mint the feed which is actually very healthy for the chickens if you do it right. Another way I learned you can stretch your feed is to get whole grains and sprout them for the chickens. And another way is to create a meat trap for black fly larvae. So we're in the process of getting that set up. So instead of doing meat birds this year like we normally do, we decided to take this year to experiment with some different feeding options. And in the meantime, we decided to buy an incubator to hatch our own birds or meat. We have heard so many people say that meat bird flavor is actually not the best flavor compared to some of the other meat bird options out there. And we realized one way we could save a lot of money is to simply take some of the fertilized eggs from our laying hens and hatch our own. So each month we're gonna hatch a batch of chickens and we are planning to do this for two to three, maybe four months if we can. And one of the major advantages to doing this is that since these will be the same breed as what we already have, we won't have to worry about keeping them separated like we would with meat birds. Please love it. Yeah, please. <laughs> please like it. We went through a lot of trouble. He is gorgeous. He was standing right next to you. There's, he's so friendly. So this, he's the most friendly. That is so cool. But still incredibly shy. The shyest of them all. Oh, he's pretty. He's half gold buff Orpington and Australorp. Is she getting broody already? The blonde one? No, yeah. The Normally our chickens are a little bit prettier than they look here, but they just finished molting. Since filming this, we've had some time to experiment with the fermentation feed. We've discovered that the quality of the feed and the brand makes a huge difference. I'll make a separate homestead video talking all about that. My daughter made nachos for dinner tonight.
As mentioned in the beginning of this video, we began buying our dream home a couple years ago, almost exactly two years. It's an unfinished home and we've been working very hard to finish it. It's been slow going. You know, in all my life, I have created turnkey homes, but I've never actually moved into one. <laughs> Luckily, I was raised in carpentry and I actually don't mind this process. I love flipping rooms and homes, to be honest. I will say it's not so much fun when you're actually living in the space though. There's just a lot of rearranging that has to be done all the time. And it's a challenge when you've got a lot of children that are always home that you're homeschooling. It's also really time consuming. However, once you get a space done, it is so rewarding. This space is our lovely little school space. It's a bit crowded though. So now that we have the library done, we're going to be able to take a lot of the things in this room and put them in the library like I've been wanting to do for some time. And then once I get some things cleared out of here, I'll be able to take the instruments, the drums, the amplifiers, and all of that good stuff upstairs that is in the living room. And I'll be able to bring it downstairs. We will still use this as a school space. However, it's going to be a school space slash music space as well. And down here is where the library is. Still have some work to do on the lights up there. I'm thinking Sputnik lights. And then that big spot's not painted because that's where the books are going in. Um, we ran out of paint. Yeah, I trusted the person behind the counter at Home Depot to help calculate the paint. And um, my husband was like, that was a mistake. <laughs> Anyways, obviously it was. This is going to be a much quieter. This is probably the quietest room in the house. So this is going to be the library study room where people that need to really focus can come and do just that. This area over here, still not done. It's got all the plumbing and everything. So we want this to stay exposed. So we need to build a wall like frame in a little wall or something my husband's plan is and make closet doors over here so today's the big day we're gonna be moving stuff Today's devotion is going to be short and sweet and I want to speak to those of you out there who have had to wait for a long time or maybe still are waiting for something that they're praying for. Isaiah 40 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles and they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. There's also Lamentations 3 25, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Psalms 27 14, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. And lastly, Galatians 6, 9. And let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time and at the appointed season, we shall reap if we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. If you're in a season of waiting, it can be really hard to not feel forgotten by God. It's hard to not feel like somehow you've slipped through the cracks. However, it's in these seasons of obscurity that deepen our roots in our faith. Looking to the Lord, and trusting him, knowing that he's got this, and praising him, looking around for things to be grateful for. These are the things that will give us the strength needed to get through these seasons. 